Yo, what is going on? Jake appears always, obviously, and today I am so ridiculously excited because I am finally going to be doing something that I've been waiting to do for forever, and that is direct die cooling, um, a processor, and more importantly, an i9, 9900K, 8 core, 16 thread, um, and the goal is to get it up to 5.2 or 5.3 gigahertz, which is mind blowing, and it's going to happen today. Guaranteed. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, if you guys did not see the build video for Red Fury, definitely check that out. I'll put a card up here so you can watch that. Um, and then once you've watched that, come back over here and then watch this video because I have a lot of cool stuff that I'm going to do to this computer to get this processor nice and cold um, for 5.2 gigahertz. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so a little bit of backstory here. Um, I did have a 7700K in this computer before. Uh, and I was running it at 5 gigahertz, and it actually ran pretty good. I'll put a picture up here. And it was sitting at about 75 degrees Celsius at maximum load, which is pretty good. Uh, but it was not enough processing power. So I upgraded to a 9900K, which is great. But I really wanted, one of the goals was to have 5 gigahertz. And I just, I can achieve that and it runs stable. But it's too hot. It hits 90 degrees and such, and it's just not good for me. Um, which does a good job at 4.8 gigahertz. I don't have it at 5 gigahertz right now. It's at 4.8 and it runs really good. I think it barely taps ADC at 4.8 gigahertz all core um, with hyperthreading. So, you know, that's not bad, but I just, I need 5 gigahertz. So I was using the CPU performance test by Passmark and I was running my CPU at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.205 volts on the core voltage and I was hitting the highest temps were 81C. Then moving on, uh, 5 gigahertz, I was running 1.305 on the core voltage and uh, I was hitting on, at the highest 95C. So let's go ahead and start with first uh, to delit this thing. So it is a soldered IHS. I'm not afraid of that though. I've seen a lot of people delit this processor. So I'm going to use this uh, Rocket Cool. I think it's the Rocket Cool 88. I might be totally wrong, but it is Rocket Cool. And, and this is the original delitting tool for the 7700K, 6000 series, 4000 series. This is the original delitting tool by Rocket Cool. The problem is that the PCB and the die for the 9900K 9th gen and 8th gen uh, Intel is different. The PCB thickness and die thickness is, is different. So this will not work by itself. They do make a new tool that's for, they actually, it's the Rocket Cool 9th gen Intel uh, delitting tool. The only difference is, is that there's, you know, like 0.4 of a millimeter difference of the PCB. So, And boom, 0 0.38 millimeters thicker. That should do it so that we can delid this 9900K. Um, next step is go ahead and get this computer out of here and take it apart again. So let's uh, let's do it. All right, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that we got to throw in this thing here. But first thing is first, we got to take this computer apart. Here's all the parts that are going in. I've got the tubing that I used in the first place when I first built this three years ago. I have a um, EK Slimline um, 240 radiator. I've got two Noctua fans, a Durbauer uh, Direct Die 9th Gen Intel CPU mount. I've got an EK Supremacy uh, water block, new fittings, and uh, for the hell of it, a one terabyte SSD, because screw it, right? If we're upgrading it, might as well put some more SSD storage.
using the old tool for, for ninth gen, you want to shave these off a little bit. And then also, uh, don't follow the arrow. You want to have this sitting so that when it's to you like this, uh, you have the words readable to you like that. And then you have the base of it down here. You got your arrow pointing to the bottom left. And then the tool will push down from the top this way a little bit. Then I'll flip it over and I'll push down from the other side once or twice. And then, uh, and then it should come off. So fingers crossed. Here we go. Really hope that I don't break the die. Next step, I'm going to take a measurement here first and uh, just get a rough measurement of how high the die is up off of the, uh, the substrate. And then I'm going to slowly start sanding it down until I get about 0.1 to 0.2, maybe even as much as 0.3 millimeters down off the top of this. And then we'll go from there. finished with the sanding I took it down by about 0 0.25 millimeters you can see those deeper like cracks um, those I think are from the factory they were that way when when I was working on this thing like in the beginning once I got all of the uh, solder off you could still see those cracks I tried but I took 0 0.24 millimeters off um, and you know I, I'm not trying to go further than that and first thing is first, we are going to, so we don't bend any pins, I'm going to very carefully, what is that? There's like a piece of something in here, and I don't know how it got there. Oh, I got it. <sighs> okay, a piece of cardboard, crisis averted. Okay. Ah, boom. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Der Bauer frame here, make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure that the the paint that's on here has not worn off. Well, it's not paint, it's a, uh, I don't know what it's called, but you gotta make sure it's not worn off so it doesn't make contact with anything. Set it down in there. Okay, here we are, I'm gonna put this back up. There's the old piece. Let's set that in there. So for tonight, I'm gonna leave it the way it is and I'm gonna pick this back up tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
Uh, the next thing that we've got to do is uh, run our coolant loop. It's going to be a little bit different from what it was before because I had an all-in-one on the CPU and then I had uh, a dedicated EK loop for the uh, 1080 Ti. So we're going to incorporate the CPU into the 1080 Ti's loop and we're adding another radiator uh, for the CPU and hopefully everything will be just fine. Uh, and hopefully my 1080 Ti continues to run at 40C on the load. So uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse the uh, putting together of this coolant loop here. I'm going to liquid metal between the die and the EK water block over there. Um, and then I'm just going to run the whole coolant loop. all the way back together and it booted which is fantastic news uh and the cracks that were in it man i don't know that's i haven't seen that before i've only deleted two other cpus um and i've never heard of it so maybe it has something to do with the fact that ninth gen intel the dies are thicker i'm not entirely sure it's definitely strange um it doesn't look like it has a an effect on the cooling it looks like so far we have a 20 degree Celsius drop and the CPU likes to idle instead of at 40 C, it likes to idle at like 28 C, which is crazy. So anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it into um, its home again. And we're gonna go ahead and do some benchmarks, do some gaming stability tests, see if we can't get 5.1 gigahertz, maybe 5.2, I doubt it. But we'll see what we can do and we'll go from there. Finally, with the computer back together and it back in its home, it is now time to benchmark everything and test the stability of the system. So here's the BIOS settings that I'm using. Um, I'm using a per core overclock here. So up to four cores can use 5.3 gigahertz. Um, after that, if six cores are being used, then 5.2 gigahertz is used. And if up to eight cores are being used, seven or eight. Um, so basically under full load, it runs at 5.1 gigahertz. 
Also down below the CPU cache, I have it 4.5 gigahertz instead of the auto 4.3. I was able to get a little bit of overclock out of that. Also, I'm using a fixed voltage of 1.34 volts. I'm actually using 1.345 load line calibration of level two. And let's start it up. So testing took a day or two, and for the last couple of days after that, um, I've been stability testing the system by playing different kinds of games that use the cores differently and such. Uh, and currently I have an uptime of almost five days. So I would definitely say that this PC at the speeds that it's running are all stable. Um, I've played Battlefield 5, Minecraft, and Rust, all of which have had no problems. The max temps I'm seeing is about 68 degrees on any one core of the processor and the GPU never gets over about 36C. During the Passmark CPU test for this, um, after the DLID, there's a point during the test where, for some reason, it demands extreme power from the CPU, and it pulls, if you look down at the bottom, CPU package power, 254 watts. That's like uh, a third more than what the CPU actually pulls. I'd say it pulls anywhere between 160 and 180 watts, something like that. Um, this is way crazy, so that's why our core max and CPU package temps are 85C. So final thoughts on the matter here, um, I'm extremely satisfied with how this turned out. I went from a 4.8 gigahertz all core frequency to 5.1 with peak speeds of 5.3 gigahertz um, while staying actually cooler than the 4.8 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive. So um, it was definitely risky. I would recommend this to everyone, but it was definitely a lot of fun. And I can also say that I have a liquid cooled, liquid metal, direct die, sanded die, 9900K, you know, in my computer. It's a whole, you know, book to say, but I mean, it's pretty cool. So I'm happy with it. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this content, let me know. If you want to see something different, let me know. If you have questions about computers or cars or 3D printing or electronics or what have you, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe if you really like my stuff. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good one. I'll catch you next time. Peace.